Good day from Port Elizabeth and welcome to the official launch of the partnership between Nelson Mandela University and Rescue South Africa. My name is Travis Trower and I'm a rescue lecturer at the Nelson Mandela University Emergency Medical Care Department as well as the director for Rescue South Africa. Thank you for joining us today. We would like to take this opportunity to celebrate this collaboration between two great entities. This partnership will provide improved rescue training for our EMC students, improved work experience for all those involved, while we continue to service our local community as well as providing disaster relief rescue to those in need. We are also developing short learning programs to assist with capacity building in Africa. Before we start, please familiarize yourself with the chat function where we can post your questions. We will be having a question and answer session at the end of the event where we hope to answer as many questions as possible. It is now my honor to introduce our Deputy Vice Chancellor of Teaching and Learning, Professor Foxcroft. It is my privilege today to extend a warm welcome to Rescue South Africa as you join Nelson Mandela University's family. Through the learning and teaching, research and engagement missions of the university, one of our main objectives is to foster graduates who are socially conscious, responsible global citizens who serve the public good. Rescue South Africa is an organization that has its roots in disaster response. Our two organizations are now embarking on a joint journey where together we can be of even more value to our communities when rescue services are needed and to leave a long-term positive impact in the process. We are looking forward to seeing how the natural synergy between our organizations will grow from strength to strength. If one considers the visions and values of our two organizations, we share much in common, particularly that we strive to put people first, especially when they are at their most vulnerable. In the words of Nelson Mandela, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived, it is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. Discussions regarding a possible partnership with Rescue South Africa started about a year ago. Thereafter, a formal mem memorandum of agreement was signed. We then jointly decided to move the cache of about 60 tons of rescue equipment from Gauteng to Kubacha. Earlier this year, this dream came to fruition when the equipment started to arrive to find a new home on our Ocean Sciences campus. The dream has become a reality and I can assure you that we are aware of the responsibilities that come with it. Back to my passion of learning and teaching. We can truly say that we are now more than ever in a position to facilitate real world learning in the classroom. To be more specific, during practical training in various environments, the same equipment that was used in recent disaster responses will now be used to augment the training of our students and practitioners to develop essential and advanced rescue skills. This is aligned with Mandela University's mission to develop, grow and ensure that our students are fit for purpose and ready to make a contribution to society right after graduation. Our student involvement with Rescue South Africa will undoubtedly contribute to the development of our envisaged graduate attributes, which include in-depth disciplinary and interdisciplinary knowledge, social awareness and responsible citizenship, adaptive expertise, creativity and innovation, critical thinking, intra and interpersonal skills, and communication skills. We want our graduates to make a difference where it matters in real life, in our communities. 
Consequently, Nelson Mandela University is so grateful for this opportunity to partner with Rescue South Africa. We are especially grateful to the CEO of Rescue South Africa, Mr. Ian Scher, for spearheading the memorandum of agreement and the mutual respectful and professional relationship that has developed as a result. Although the initial phase involves mostly real life disaster responses and training, it is also envisaged that this initiative will lead to future research and community engagement opportunities. The under-resourced Eastern Cape will also benefit from the equipment and emergency vehicles that can be used to respond appropriately in emergency and rescue situations. We are truly privileged to partner with Rescue South Africa and look forward to where our mutual journey will take us. In 1999, a group of volunteers decided to go abroad and assist after an earthquake in Izmit, Turkey. This rescue mission revealed to the team a very serious skill shortage in search and rescue in Southern Africa. Out of this was born the concept of Rescue South Africa. So in 2001, an NGO was formed called Specialized Rescue South Africa, or more commonly known as Rescue South Africa. The vision was to enable Africans to be good citizens of the world, to show the world that Africans can help themselves and offer humanitarian services worldwide. Rescue South Africa had three primary objectives. Firstly, to respond to sudden onset disasters and provide technical rescue skills, regionally, nationally and internationally to build a cache of equipment to be used both for both training and response. And lastly, to build capacity by offering high quality rescue training regionally, nationally and internationally. An approach was made to USAID for funding and eight American rescue technicians were brought out to South Africa, who in turn trained 26 trainers from emergency services. This group of trainers have literally trained thousands of South Africans right up to the level of urban search and rescue technician. And in fact, these courses are now offered in South Africa at four universities, many EMS colleges, as well as some fire departments to train emergency services students, right up to the level of rescue technician. At the universities, it forms part of their bachelor's degree course that trains future emergency care practitioners. Part of the funding received from USAID, as well as later from the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, JICA, and the United Nations, went into putting together a cache of rescue equipment, which weighs approximately 60 tons and is probably worth anything between 50 and 60 million rand if one was to buy it today. And in fact, it is the most comprehensive USAR cache in Sub-Saharan Africa. As part of our capacity building, Rescue South Africa ran training in eight SADC countries. Botswana, Lesotho, Malawi, Mozambique, Swaziland, Namibia, Madagascar and Zambia. And the people trained in these, those various countries were the first to be exposed to this type of training in Sub-Saharan Africa. From the SADC countries, 60 urban search and rescue technicians were developed. Rescue South Africa has proudly responded to different types of sudden onset disasters. In Mozambique was a good example where Africans were seen to be helping Africans and received a commendation from INSERAG, really almost unheard of, for the, for the spectacular rescues that we carried out in Beira in 2019. We also responded to India, Iran, Algeria, Haiti for, for earthquakes, Japan for the tsunami, Pakistan, the Philippines, Malawi, the DRC for the volcanic eruption, and then various calls that we've responded to in South Africa. To, today, we have a tried and tested model and track record, including standard operating procedures and logistics that enable us to do these responses. 
One of the highlights of Rescue South Africa's history is receiving the Ubuntu Award, recognizing the work it's done in promoting South Africa globally. A positive outcome from our development is that thousands of South Africans, as well as those in the SADC region, have been trained as USAR technicians. As well as various courses for our outreach program, our standard USAR courses are accredited by the University of Johannesburg. Having achieved these milestones, we reflected on what would be the next step forward. With motivation and much enthusiasm from Mandela University's lecturer, Travis Trower, a board member and previous principal at Rescue South Africa, we decided that Rescue South Africa and its cache of equipment would be better served moved from the well-resourced Gauteng to the Eastern Cape. Travis made us aware of all of the shortages of equipment and dire need for further assistance in the Eastern Cape. So our cache of equipment was moved from the University of Johannesburg to Nelson Mandela University where it's already being used to train students, not just in lecture halls, but on the road where irreplaceable experience is gained. We're now starting to reach out to emergency services in the region to offer assistance in technical rescues, exposing our final year students to real life situations. Our first experience being on the 12th of October, where we successfully assisted SAPS on a rescue call. We're also looking forward to adding our, our rural outreach programs to those run by Nelson Mandela University. This is the future of Rescue South Africa. We, the Faculty of Health Sciences, are proud today to officially launch our partnership with Rescue South Africa. The Faculty of Health Sciences currently offers qualifications in 10 health professions, as well as the new medical program which started in 2021. We deliver these various programs in state-of-the-art laboratories and teaching venues on the North, South and Ocean Sciences campuses in Summer Strand and on Mission Vale campus, ensuring that our students are not only exposed to the traditional classroom setup, but also to practical, hands-on training as healthcare professionals within the communities they will serve. As the faculty grows, one of its core principles is to ensure that we can help strengthen public facilities and health services, collaborating in core partnerships across faculties and various stakeholders for the benefit of our communities. And this is where our partnership with Rescue South Africa perfectly fits into our long-term vision. One of our very dynamic departments is emergency medical care. In layman's terms, we often refer to them as paramedics or ambulance men and women, but that is an underestimation of what their training is about. Our emergency medical care department is primarily situated on the Missionville campus, and this is where we plan to further expand the facilities they require for training, especially in rescue skills, which is a specialized field in their profession. So if you can visualize students abseiling on ropes across buildings or from bridges and crawling through trenches, you can form an idea of just how hard and intricate their training is. Added to this are work integrated learning hours in ICU and an ambulance over weekends where they spend their time training. Imagine getting a call that a person went missing during a boat trip and a search and recovery operation is required in stormy waters in the open sea. That will give you a very good idea and understanding of how specialized and diverse this field has to be to uh, meet those demands. Soon, a rescue response vehicle will also be made operational for the students to obtain real life rescue training as part of the work integrated learning platform. Once again, providing service to society while gaining valuable expertise. We are proud to formally announce our partnership with Rescue South Africa today. Our campus is the new home or hub for not only enhanced training opportunities in rescue, but also disaster response activities of Rescue SA, which will be mobilized from our Nelson Mandela campus. We have made a commitment to the CEO of Rescue SA, Mr. Ian Sher, that the university and specifically the Faculty of Health Sciences will strive to ensure that Rescue SA will continue to be operational and provide the necessary support 
on ground level when needed. And that we will also build capacity in rescue activities in South Africa by providing support towards the maintenance and control of the elaborate cache of rescue equipment that is part of this collaboration. We've also committed to collaborate with the EMS College, which was recently opened at the Doranginza Hospital site, to ensure that we share resources now that we have been blessed with this priceless asset from Rescue SA. Future plans include dedicated rescue facilities on the Mission Vale campus and new training programs, including short courses to upskill as many emergency care and other practitioners as possible, not only in South Africa, but hopefully in other African countries as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. I am Professor Ilse Truter, the Director of the School of Clinical Care and Medicinal Sciences in our faculty. Emergency medical care is one of the five departments in our school. I am an academic. I love books, words, lecturing and interacting with students. And then sometimes I am confronted with reality and specifically the reality of our rescue practitioners and the importance of the rescue operations that they undertake. I invite you to watch the video that is playing with me. This is what our rescue practitioners are faced with. Observe the force of nature and watch the faces of the people. Feel the danger and lift the excitement. Feel the adrenaline and the energy. On 20 March 2019, Reuters reported on one of our very own heroes, Travis Trauer, a staff member of the Department of Emergency Medical Care and Principal of Rescue South Africa, said that many people remain trapped on islands of land around Beira, but that the acute rescue phase, pulling people from rooftops and trees, was largely complete. They further reported that Tower described scenes where mothers passed him their children from trees and crowds of people swarmed around rescue helicopters when they were able to land. On the Tuesday, rescuers saved 167 people around Beira with the help of South African Air Force helicopters. This is reality. We have traveled a journey, an exciting journey with Arisco South Africa the past year. Today is the first step towards the second phase of our journey, a new beginning. Now the negotiations and talks change to action, a term very familiar in the EMC, emergency medical care profession. Coming back to the reason for today, it is my privilege to do the vote of thanks. To the CEO, of Rescue South Africa, thank you Mr. Ian Shi, for entrusting Nelson Mandela University with your legacy. Your passion and continued drive to reach out to people in need is evident and inspiring. I will never forget all the planning and especially the logistics involved in moving the many tons of equipment to our Ocean Sciences campus. On 16 April this year, in the evening 1842, I received a WhatsApp message from Nicolo. Proof we are nearly in Craddock. An exciting moment after a long journey. This was certainly a massive undertaking to bring the equipment to our campus. Travis, Nico and team, thank you for ensuring that equipment arrived safely on campus. I am pleased that we persisted and made this happen. It's a proud moment for us. Proof Mutwa. In your absence today, thank you for supporting this initiative. You drive the vision of, for our institution, the legacy of Nelson Mandela and what Rescue South Africa stands for are similar. Prof Foxcraft, our sincere thank you to you for opening the proceedings today. Our continued gratitude will be revealed by the number of students and practitioners we successfully train and equip with unique skills in the future. Prof. Dalena van Rooyen, you were our Acting Executive Dean at the time of negotiations and the finalization of the agreement. 
Thank you, Prof. Van Ruyen, for everything that you have done to make this possible. You are behind the scenes today. We salute you. You have literally connected the dots for us in this long journey. Prof. Zangela, you joined us in August this year as our new Executive Dean. Thank you for supporting what was started and for being as enthusiastic about the collaboration as we are. We miss you today, but know that your United Nations board meeting in Austria is also a priority for you. Our marketing and communications team at Nelson Mandela University, Yarija Raja, Philip Hulse, Ross Sutton in our faculty, thank you. You are an amazing team. To our head of department, Mr. Mursin Rowland, thank you for your support that you will allow the Department of Emergency Medical Care to grow. With this, I now hand over to Mr. Rowland, who will provide some detail of the Department of Emergency Medical Care and the team, and also where rescue fits into the curriculum, as well as some of the future plans. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Hey, good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Muxin. Um, I'm the head of the department at uh, Nelson Mandela University for our program Emergency Medical Care. Being an emergency care medical care practitioner is not just another job or something that can be done by anyone. It requires a very specific type of person to be able to work in the face of death, to be able to think and make decisions in split seconds, to work under stress and thrive. After all, lives depend on us, our successful application of training received. During the program, our students are expected to cultivate the necessary attributes and values that constitute the making of an excellent emergency care practitioner, fit for purpose, as Prof. Foxcroft mentioned. Some of the values that we teach to our students are professionalism, altruism, maturity, respect, discipline, punctuality, endurance, uniformity, and many more. I am proud today as head of the Department of Emergency Medical Care to be part of the official launch of the Nelson Mandela University Rescue South Africa collaboration. Our department is one of the newest and smallest departments in the Faculty of Health Sciences one of only four universities in South Africa offering the EMC degree. We currently have a total of 110 students from first year to fourth year enrolled on our program. Rescue training normally starts in the second year of the BMC program and runs through to the fourth year, of the, which is the final year. There's a total of 12 rescue models embedded on our program that cover all aspects of technical rescue, some of which include fire rescue, motor vehicle rescue and rope rescue. For our rescue training, we make use of high fidelity scenarios where the students practice their rescue skills in a simulated real life environment. This creates an emergency care practitioner that is able to operate in austere environments, hence the reason that our graduates are sought after all over the world, being employed and utilized in both private and government sectors. As already mentioned by my previous speaker, the collaboration opens many new training, research and engagement opportunities for our department. It is not only a good day for our department, but also for the whole faculty and the university. The way Rescue South Africa responds to disasters is a holistic approach involving multiple disciplines from rescue practitioners to nurses to medical doctors and all the way to engineers. Our faculty also focuses on an interprofessional education model and we will need to use this collaboration to our advantage. That's not our personal advantage, but to improve the education as well as to ensure we produce fit for purpose graduates based on the needs of the communities that we serve. Mr. Ian, CEO of Rescue South Africa, thank you for partnering with us. We will strive to be worthy custodians of the equipment that have already saved many lives, and we hope it will save many more lives in disaster responses. Before we start the live question and answer sessions, I would also like to take the opportunity to express the department's gratitude and appreciation to Prof. Ilse Trutte, as the Director of the School of Clinical Care and Medicinal Sciences, which is the school our department is situated at. She provided us with the support and commitment that was crucial for the establishment of this memorandum. Thank you for all the hard work and support. With that, with that being said, I would now hand over to Mr. Trauer to start the live question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ronan, for the handover and welcome to the live session. My name is Travis Trower and I'm a rescue lecturer at the Nelson Mandela University, as well as a board member for Rescue South Africa. Before we move on to any of the questions and answer session, please 
<clears throat> Please, could you post any questions inside the chat? I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to our guest speakers and everyone involved with this collaboration between the Nelson Mandela University and Rescue South Africa, as well as to all you viewers. Please feel free to continue to post questions. We will try our best to answer as many of, as possible. Unfortunately, Mr. Ian Schur is unavailable today due to unforeseen medical reasons. But should you have any questions that they are not able to, understand, to fully answer or have questions specifically directed to Mr. Ian Schur, please email us after the event and we'll respond accordingly. Let us have a look at the first question. I'd like to get involved with disaster response. What must I do? Disaster response is involves quite, quite a lot of different expertise. We have been on disaster responses where we have engineers that accompany us, we have firemen, as well as emergency care practitioners. We even have logistic officers that, at, that attend with us. Should you feel that you have any of these skills and would like to become part of the disaster response, you're able to send us your CV and the relevant information to our um, to the email address that will be provided at the end of the Q&A session, and we'll be able to screen that CV and we'll respond accordingly. Okay, it's a second question. I think this one's for you, Mr. Rudd. What is the requirements to study the BMC course? Thank you, Mr. Trump. Um, first of all, I think you need to have a, uh, a requirement to study um, a four-year degree, which means you need to have endorsement from a trick to study a four-year degree program. And then some of the subjects that you would require would be maths, physical science and life sciences. And that's about it. We normally have our selections uh, twice a year where we screen the applicants and then we'll get to know the outcome. Thank you. I would like to ask the third question. I'd like to inquire about the rescue training you provide. Okay, so we, we, have, we have quite a bit of different subjects that we train for rescue. We, we train everything from the oil and gas industry into the mining industry. But our key focus is um, very much on the, on the rescue modules that are offered in the BMC program across the four universities. These encompass pretty much everything from uh, rescue training in the, in, the, in the water environment for rescue training that is in the wilderness environment, also to uh, an urban environment. If you would like more details on these subjects, you can also have a look on our, on our um, website where it will explain <coughs> each one of the modules to you. What determines whether you mobilize to a disaster? So, the, so there's a couple of variables when we, when we decide whether we're going to mobilize or not. One of the first ones is what is the need and um, how, what is the need that, that, is, that, is, that is there for us? Is it an earthquake? Is it a flood? We have to obviously look at that. And also we need to be specifically asked from that country or from somebody that is going to provide the sponsorship for that um, response. Which of the disaster responses in the past stood out the most to you? Sure. I've only been on three responses with uh, Rescue South Africa. There have been numerous ones, as Ian mentioned in the um, earlier on in his speech. I think the one for me would definitely be the Mos Mozambique disaster response. I think the reason for that would simply because we, we responded extremely quickly to the disaster. We actually drove in, almost into the cyclone as it was approaching the Mozambique. So I think arriving so early on time just gave us the opportunity to really um, render rescue services to those people in need. As, as time passes with these types of disasters, the longer we take to respond to them, the least likely there hood there is of us saving life. So I think Definitely Mozambique because it was so successful and because we arrived at such a good time. I think this one's for you, Mr. Roland. Can one make a full-time career out of disaster response? I think, first of all, I think South Africa is one of the only um, countries where we combine medical and rescue. And so the answer would be, short and sweet, would be yes and no. Uh, Mr. Trau himself is a, is a paramedic and he's a rescue paramedic. So he's got, normally our qualification um, gives you the, the foundation to, to go in, in, in both streams. Um, so yes, you can make it a full-time career. Um, currently, our profession is looking at a, a one-year program just for rescue. But at this stage now, our program is designed over four years. And there's 12 rescue models within our curriculum. Um, and that combines uh, being a medic and a rescue medic. 
I think I could maybe add a little bit to that, Mr. Rowland. I think specifically in South Africa with only disaster response, I, I feel it would make it would be difficult to make a full-time career out of it, simply because the, the disasters, they, they don't happen every day. Um, they, they're few and far between. And, and our, at Rescue South Africa, we are voluntary service. Yeah. So we do not pay our volunteers when they come to assist us on a disaster. So I have been lucky enough, as Mr. Rowland mentioned, to, to be able to service the public in the rescue capacity. But from the disaster response side, it doesn't earn me any money at all. It is volunteer. It is definitely volunteer based. Okay, next question. What did the, why did the equipment move from the University of Johannesburg to Nelson Mandela University? And what benefit does it have for the Eastern Cape, especially during the festive season? So the, the Eastern Cape, to be honest, is, is not as well resourced as what um, Johannesburg is. I mean, Johannesburg being the biggest um, um, city in South Africa, there are, there are a lot of resources available. Eastern Cape is, um, is, is a smaller province and doesn't have as many, many resources available. That's one of the reasons. Also, um, the Rescue South Africa joined into a partnership or, um, or a collaboration, so should I say, with the Nelson Mandela University. And currently the BMC program um, run at the Nelson Mandela University is one of the youngest, the youngest amongst the four other universities. And I think the collaboration together with Rescue South Africa and Nelson Mandela University definitely pushed the BMC um, course um, ahead of time in terms of equipment and, uh, and um, assets that are now made available to our BMC students. So I think those are the, the two key, the two key reasons. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rowland, this one's for you. Can one study the BMC course part time? No, I don't know. There's no way at this stage, no. The program is designed over four years. Um, there is shorter learning programs, which is a one year program, a certificate program, and then there's a two year program. The two year program is going to move to a three year program soon. But currently, the four universities that offer the BMC degree or the Bachelor of Emergency Care degree is so four years or full time. And the, the curriculum is just so packed. There is no way that anybody can do a four-year program that is um, Monday to Friday um, part-time, which means it will take at least maybe six to seven years. And nobody wants to see, study six to, six to seven years. So at this stage, no, it's a, a, a full-time four-year degree. Okay. Um, what determines whether you mobilize the disaster area? I think I slightly touched on this earlier on, but I think it's it's the request that we've got to have um, from from whichever, like for example, in Mozambique, we've got a request from the from the disaster management. I know in the past there have been requests from government entities outside the country. Should we should we respond with inside our borders? We'd have to obviously get a request from a specific area, and also we'd have to decide on the need. For, for our response. Is there enough resources to, to accomplish what is needed? If not, then we can make the resources that are available at Rescue South Africa um, to assist the people. Um, this one, do, I think, yeah, we, can both one? There, we can both, we can both give it. Um, do, do you register at the HBCSA as a rescuer? I think the answer to that would be, would be no. At this current time, definitely not. You would register at the HBCSA as a, a BMC uh, paramedic. Um, there's also other courses that also involve rescue, but I think your primary registration is under your medical under your medical license. It would be nice for someone like Travis that has that that is done so many rescues to have a, a standalone um, um, profession or a, a, a registration, but at this stage, no. But it's something that we obviously would like to see happen in the future where rescue practitioners can actually register as a, as a rescue practitioner as a standalone. But as of now in South Africa. Okay, this, this is a question that, that we get quite often. Uh, typically, how long is a disaster response mission? And do I have to put leave in from part of the team? So I'll answer that in two parts. Uh, typically, we like to we like to fall under the um, INSERAG, International Search and Rescue Advisory Group's um, description on, of, if I can use that word, on, of how we would respond. And it's normally we do 10 days in country, in the disaster stricken country. So we, I don't think, it will be safe to say it's normally not more than 14 days, 
two days of travel to the site, two days of travel home, and then 10 days inside the country um, rendering disaster relief. Do you have to put leave in? If you are part of the, of the Rescue South Africa team, we like to get our, our paperwork and documentation already, um, way before the disaster, the onset of the disaster. So we like to approach those, those volunteers that do have, have permanent jobs and say to them, please will you chat to your managers, um, will you get letters to, to um, allow you to leave at a very short, very short notice. Um, so that would be pretty much up to your employer whether they require you take, to take leave or not. It, it needs to be understood that when you respond, we like to pack all the equipment and be up in the air as quickly as possible. I know Ian says our goal is to get going within six hours. Um, so that is our focus. So I think that the main thing would be to, to put all the, the, the procedures and measures in place should, you, should we need to leave at a short notice um, that your employer is aware of that. Mr. Ronan, I think this one is, uh, is for you. <laughs> Can you RPL into the BFC program? Yeah, it's a very common question. We get it quite often and, and, uh, on a daily basis. And so the answer is yes, we do RPL candidates. And we need to assess your application, we look at your matric, we look at your experience within, within the profession. And then if you do qualify, um, we then ask you to come in for a, a, a test, a written test, and then a simulation. And then we'll give you the outcome within the next week or so after you've done the, the, the written test and the simulation. So yes, everybody that meets the criteria for RPL, they, we do have um, that program available. Okay, so there seems to be no more questions being put into the chat for now. So I think I'd like to take this opportunity now to say thank you, thank you to everybody that's been involved with this with uh, this collaboration between NMU and uh, the Rescue South Africa. I'd like to thank all the viewers for taking the time to join us. And should you have any questions that you'd like us to answer or any more information, please feel free to contact us at the end of this. Um, the end of this Q&A session, the, the, the um, details uh, for our contact will be made available to you. For now, goodbye from the campus by the sea and stay safe. We hope to meet you all in person soon. Thank you. Thank you.